Get ready to have her be a part of your world. Make some noise for Miss Jody Benson! Hey, thank you so much. You're very welcome. All right, how's everybody doing? Well, you guys like are way over in the corner. If I sit back here, you can't see me. Sorry, sorry about that. Hey, what's up? I feel like I'm going to move downstage just a little bit here. I'm going to just do this so I can see all my friends over there. Oh, I'm so sorry I'm late. I was trying to finish my line and uh, do all my meet and greets, and I could not get out of the booth area. So I'm sorry, I'm just a little bit late before I catch a plane. So thank you guys so much for coming out. It's been a blast here in Raleigh with all of you. Love all the costumes. It's been amazing. And uh, we've had lots and lots of fun. So let's get to the questions, shall we? Hey, Santa. I've been good this year. <laughs> so don't forget. Don't forget me at Christmas. All right. How can I help you guys? I was wondering if you've um, played any of the video games. You know, it's really interesting. All the things that I have recorded, I've never played. Isn't that weird? It's so weird. Um, I, I'm not a big video game person. I'm not very technical, so I don't really know how to use things. And um, even when I have trouble with my phone and stuff like that, I have to ask my kids constantly every day how to do things on my phone. I'm constantly handing it to them. Fix this, fix this, make this right. So, no, I am technically challenged, unfortunately. But, yeah, all the games are really cool. So glad I get to be part of them. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Hello. Hi, I'm Ava. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Ava. Um, my question for you is that uh, we all are getting used to this new uh, Little Mermaid cast, and it's big news right now, and I was wondering, what are your thoughts? Well, I think I pretty much explained it when I was in Miami a few weeks ago, but I just think it's amazing, and we need to focus on telling the story and being true and authentic with the spirit of the character and not worrying about the outside appearance of things, you know? We really need to... Um, I mean, you know, for all of us, we need to uh, just remove all the externals with, with when it comes to everybody, every shape and size and form and everybody that's on the spectrum and every... Oh, that was a really weird noise, wasn't it? Was that my microphone? Oh, a light went out. Oh, my goodness. That was weird. Um, a light went out. Just going to tell you guys that. Glass shattered. Uh, but I think that it's just really important to focus on the inside of people, focus on their heart and what they're saying to us and what they're communicating to us. And, um, you know, I, I just, I'm super excited to see how they're going to do this whole underwater world. It's going to be amazing. And with Lynn manuel and... We've got Robbie Marshall and John DeLuca, and we're old, old friends. So I'm super excited to see how the company's going to create this underwater world. And I will be there and watching. Can't wait. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Hey, how are you? Good. Um, I was wondering, whenever you go to Disney, like, have you ever dressed up as Ariel and done like a character? <laughs> you don't want to see that. Uh, <laughs> no. No, I have never, ever put on that costume. Actually, one time years ago, like, I don't even know, maybe it was like 1995, as a joke, I was, I was in New York doing a premiere of one of our re-releases, and I was in a gown and working and singing and, and performing. And the costume designer that came with my gown in the bag, she had the Ariel costume from the park as a joke. And so just between she and I in the hotel room, I put it on. I don't even, we didn't take pictures or anything. We just giggled and laughed. And she's like, oh, lay on the sofa. Look how funny it is. Look how. But nobody ever saw that, thank God. We don't, we don't want to see that. <laughs> no, the only thing I do when I go to the parks is I wear an Ariel T-shirt because I never get to wear Ariel stuff no matter where I go. Um, that would be kind of weird, so a little self-indulgent. So uh, the only place that I can wear something that says Ariel on it is at Disney World and not feel ridiculous. Or Disneyland. So I have my 12 Ariel t-shirts and I bring them and wear them every day. And, you know, it's, I feel, it's fun. It just makes sense. And no one laughs at me 
when, I, when I'm there. So, <laughs> yeah, thank you. thank you. Hey, little redhead, look how cute you look. What was your favorite part about working on The Little Mermaid? Ooh, that's a great question. Uh, working in the I, you guys heard that question, I'm sure. But um, working in the recording studio with Howard Ashman, it was just amazing as my director and, uh, and as our lyricist and just everything that he brought to the film and having that opportunity to work with him in the studio was just so amazing, you know, such a blessing. So loved every minute of it. Really great experience. Yeah, thank you, sweetie. Yes. Hi, my name is Elise. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. And um, my question is, how do you feel about being part of a film that has had a cultural impact on, like, our generation mm -hmm. and is continuing to make an impact on, like, the current generation mm -hmm. and will continue to do that for generations right. to come? It's neat to see that we're cycling around our fourth generation of the film now um, because we're, we're having great-grandparents that are sharing it now with their great-grandchildren after 30-plus years. So, uh, you know, it's, it's such an honor and such a blessing for me to get to be part of the film and to represent the character, represent the company. Um, and I take it, you know, very seriously. I don't take it lightly. And uh, it really matters to me. You know, I love getting to meet all of you. Um, these weekends are just filled with so much fun for me to hear the stories. And I love to hear the stories of, of what the film means to people and the different reactions that they give me. And we go through a lot of Kleenex at my table. There's lots of tears. <laughs> and, and that's precious, you know, to say that this film was what they watched with their dad and he passed away. And it's just a wonderful memory that they have. So that's the thing I enjoy the most about uh, representing the film are the stories. I love to hear what the film and the character means to them. And it just kind of gives them that little snippet in time that they get to hold on to. And even though it's an animated feature film and it's a form of entertainment, it's, it's a moment in time for people. And that's, that's the thing I treasure the most. Thank you. Thank you, sweetie. Does it smell like french fries in here? <laughs> Am I imagining that? That's so funny. I'm like, what is that smell? Hi, my Hi. name is Jessica. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, I wanted to know, you do a lot of these panels and Comic Cons and stuff like that, so who is the person that you fangirl over meeting? Oh, <laughs> um, well, I have not met my, my, my ladies yet. It would be uh, Barbara Streisand, and it would be um, Probably, I have met Julie Andrews, yeah, and I did fangirl over her big time. Uh, but I think Barbara Streisand, that's who I would probably melt in meeting, because I've memorized every song, every lyric, every, everything about her. You know, she's a brilliant director, brilliant actress, um, storyteller. I love the way she interprets songs. Um, so that would be somebody for me. I hope in my lifetime I'll have that opportunity. You never know. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Hi, how are you? It's good to see you again. Good to see you too, sweetie. Oh, um, That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if you were to pick a scene, whether it was as a mermaid or human, besides falling in love with Eric, what would be your favorite? My favorite scene in the movie? Mm -hmm. uh, Part of your world. I, I love that animation from Glenn Keane. I love the... Um, the underwater exploration of the song. I love the way that he blocked every lyric and all of her action that she's doing. Um, I love the movement of her hair in the water. Uh, so that whole scene is really, really special to me. And that song is, you know, it's just magical. So, yeah, awesome. thank well, you. Thank you. You've thank you been, so much. You're my inspiration and hero. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Very sweet. This is my friend Tony. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Um, so as you know, Ariel's one of my favorite characters. Yes, sir. Um, but she's been met with a lot of criticism. I feel like it's unfair. Um, people are saying she gives her voice up for a man, even mm -hmm. though her love for the human world has been established before she met Eric. Right. Um, and just things like that. Um, and yeah. she saves the prince. But I was wondering how you respond to those criticisms and what are positive 
aspects of our her character that you like to highlight? Well, I think we have to realize that our princess before Ariel was Sleeping Beauty, 1961. 59, thank you. Thank you. And um, so we go from 1959 to 1989. So there's a huge jump that we have to make between princesses. So I think where we jump to for Ariel in 1989 is very appropriate. She shows a, a rebellious spirit, she shows a tenacious spirit, she shows that she's strong and courageous and she reaches outside of the box. We see that she breaks down any barriers of where she comes from, that she's reaching for something far beyond that seems unimaginable. And when we add in the element of the prince, yes, we do have some of the traditional values. Um, I won't use the word values. We have some traditional um, ways to observe how she's handling that relationship. But do remember, it's 1989, so it's not 2019, you know? So with each of these, I think she gives us a great foundation of a stepping stone to go from Aurora to Ariel, to Belle, and then where we are today. So you have to have that natural progression in society to be able to see the growth of women. And I do think we have a great leap of growth between the two of 59 and 89. Um, and then we have on to where we are today. But so that's kind of how I interpret where Ariel is. I think she showed us a lot of strength but I think that we've grown a lot since 1989 as well we should, right? So that's change and that's natural progression. And um, so there's nothing necessarily to defend or argue about or anything. It's just the way it was. It's what the film was. And I think with where we were, it was appropriate for that time and that decade. All right, thank you so much. Thank you for the question, I appreciate it. Hi, Jody. Hi. A big fan of your work in Little Mermaid and Toy Story, of course. I always love your optimism. You're always so bright and shiny. However, yeah. if you could play any Disney villain, <laughs> who would that be? <laughs> yes, a Disney villain. Ooh. Um, I think Maleficent's pretty cool. Um, pretty cool costumes and everything. And I uh, love that movie. So it would probably be one of the more traditional going back in time for me. Yeah. Great Thank question. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Great costume. Thank you. Hank here. Hey, how are you doing, Hank? Quite well, thank you very Good. much. Good. <laughs> okay. So Part of Your World, great song, by the way. Thank you. And in one of the lyrics, which is, uh, bet you on land, they don't understand, bet they don't reprimand their daughters. Right. Yet ironically in the sequel, Ariel actually does reprimand her own daughter Melody for yeah. attempting to go out to the go out to the sea, and it's and I must ask why? Why? That's a great question, Hank. No one's ever asked me that before. I love that. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, you won. You won. No one's ever asked me this question. It's the first time, right? Um, yeah, isn't that funny how as a parent you you say things as a as a child and then you turn around and do it as a parent? <laughs> I mean, I think we all have done that. I've things that have happened with between my mom and I and I say I'm never going to do that with my daughter and then, you know, I'll be having this conversation with my daughter and I'll be like, "Oh my gosh." And she's like, "You sound just like Nina." I'm like, "I know." That's crazy. So it, it, there is that irony in it, and I think that's normal as a parent, you know, once you've gone through that. But it is really a fun observation. And again, it's interesting, too, that both um, Triton and Ariel are making these comments to their daughter for their safety. So okay. when it comes to safety, you kind of throw all the rules out. <laughs> I had a feeling when that it would comes be the to safety, you draw the line in the sand. So, okay. yeah, great observation, Hank. Thank you very much, Jody. Thank pleasure, you. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you too, sweetie. Thank you. Hi, Hi. I'm I'm Kenneth. Hey, Kenneth, how are you? Doing good. good. Love your voice work as Ariel. Thank you. And I have a question to you. Well, was it like uh, working for, well? I know that's not going to be any Disney related, but um, 
What's it like working for a, te for a television show called Camp Laszlo? Yes, it's a very fun show. Um, Camp Laszlo was Cartoon Network, and I started the first year of the series when we lived in Los Angeles. So we all recorded together simultaneously doing the whole episodic work together as a group. It was tons of fun. We had an amazing cast. But then we were in the midst as a family moving from Los Angeles to North Georgia. And um, Cartoon Network is based in Atlanta. So I thought, oh, well, maybe this, you know, at first I thought I'd have to lose my job. But they're like, no, no. So then the second season, um, we, I recorded by myself in Atlanta. And it was really fun, different. I could hear everybody, you know, through, the, through my uh, headphones. But it was very different to record by yourself when you're not circled around everybody and, and acting. But um, Camp Lazo was a lot of fun for me and really um, challenging because I had three or four different characters. And sometimes if all of the characters would be in the same episode, it was really hard to remember, OK, who am I now? And what does she sound like? And so I had four little pictures of my characters in front of me that would kind of help me to mentally get back into each character. But it was kind of hard to play opposite yourself back and forth. I hadn't really done that before. Uh, but it was really challenging and really fun. Yeah, I had a great time with that show. Cool. And we won an Emmy Award, which was, which was even, you know, a lovely, lovely surprise. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for asking that. I appreciate it. Hi, Jody. Hey, how are you? Now, every Disney princess has her own lovable legacy, you know, going back almost 80 years now. So I have to ask, if you had to go back and be a different Disney princess, who would it be? Ooh, probably going to be Cinderella, because that's kind of the one that, that I really grew up with. Um, yeah, I'd probably have to say Cinderella. I really enjoyed that animated feature film. I loved that she, um, again kind of came from nothing and really had to work to come out of herself. Uh, and I love the music. I thought it was beautiful and the magic of it uh, was so, so lovely. So I'd have to say Cinderella. And you know, the prince is her reward at the end, so she's real nice. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Thank, Thank you. you so much, I appreciate that. Hey, sweetheart. How did you get the part of Ariel? Oh, okay, that's a great question. Um, I was doing a Broadway show called Smile with Howard Ashman and Marvin Hamlish. And at the time, Howard started working with the Walt Disney Company, and he was working on The Little Mermaid. And when our Broadway show uh, suddenly closed after six weeks, it was a very, uh, very short run, and we were all out of a job, he felt sorry for us, and he allowed all the girls to audition for The Little Mermaid. So. I was not pursuing uh, voiceover, that's for sure. Uh, my passion was always uh, Broadway, doing musicals eight times a week. And um, so then this came up and boom, just made a, a, a new direction and a different take on my life. And God had another plan and I am so happy because it's been an amazing journey. And here we are 30 plus years later, still talking about this wonderful film. So oh, that's a great question, sweetie. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey. Hi, Jody. I just want to say thank you for being one of my lifelong inspirations. Oh, and that's so sweet. Also, thank you. Speaking of Broadway, um, what did you, um, what was your opinion on the Broadway rendition of The Little Mermaid, specifically Sierra Bagus? Yeah, trail? loved it. We went. Um, Disney invited our family to come opening night to the Broadway musical, and. Uh, we sat in the eighth row center. I actually sat with Sierra's parents, sat to the side of me. And I just, I just sobbed like a baby <laughs> the whole show. And when the curtain came down at the end, I was supposed to go to the red carpet and meet her and take pictures. And then I said, I just need to have like 10 minutes here to kind of gather myself together because I just boo-hooed like a baby, you know, thinking about Howard and just thinking about the fact that this movie had another life in, and how it is now touching the Broadway stage, which is my, my first love and my first passion. So it was really, really exciting um, to see that. And, and to sit with Sierra's parents were really sweet. Yeah, it was really fun. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great. All right, well, I do have one question. So 
it being a voiceover, what do you think is the most challenging, um, I guess, component to a voiceover opportunity? Yeah, it's getting everything across with just your voice. You know, when you are a, a, a stage performer, you use your whole body and you act everything out physically. And so to just get everything across, every emotion, every thought, every single thing, just through your voice sometimes is very frustrating and very challenging uh, because you, you could do a line 50 times and then all of a sudden, boom, um, you're just not getting it. And um, as much as you try, you feel like, oh gosh, you should have it now after 50 takes. Um, and they'll push the button and say, you know, you're doing a great job, but it's just not coming across. It's just not coming across. And there'd be one line every day like that. And so I just have to take a break you know, just get out of the room and just like free my mind for a minute because okay. there'd always be like one line that would just drive me absolutely crazy. <laughs> um, so that's, that's the frustrating part because you feel like you're giving it your all, but when they're closing their eyes and it's just not coming across. Yeah. So yeah, that's very different than on stage yeah. for me. That, that's the big difference. Thank you very yeah. much, and I'm a very, very big fan as well. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Hey. Hey. Um, my name's Nikki. Hi. And my question is, so I've seen videos online of where you will sometimes go to different events, and people will have no idea you're going to show up, <laughs> and it just completely surprises them. What is that like for you when you get to see the reactions from these people that they're just so flabbergasted at seeing you there that it's, it's just like, wow. Um, I've only done one surprise event and that was for a, a, a wedding that um, was actually, it was a job that they, they contacted my agent. And um, so yeah, that really shocked the bride and that was so sweet. Uh, other times when I come out for a Disney event, whether it's at the park or something and they don't know, um, I, I, I love surprises, so it's fun, you know, fun to be part of that. Uh, but to see, to see people's reaction, and I know that they're not necessarily reacting to me, they're reacting to the character and to the film, um, and that makes it so much more special, you know, to know that the film and the character means something to them like it does to me, so that, that makes it special. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi. Hi. It's so lovely to be able to talk to you, so thank you for coming here. Oh, sure. So my question is, Ariel is the only princess that has a daughter or a child at all. What were your thoughts when you got the script on that, and why do you think they chose Ariel specifically? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. I think, um, you know, doing the, we did the sequel first, and then we went back and did the prequel. So when the sequel came out first, direct to video, um, it just was a natural progression, I think, for, for Ariel to become a mom. And we needed to see where she and Eric landed, you know, after the end of the original movie. So uh, it, was, it was perfect, you know, it was really perfect. And to be able to then incorporate that struggle between the land and the sea for Melody as well, and how to connect those two worlds. So I, I thought they did a really lovely job trying to tie up those loose ends from the film original and then bring us to the next journey. And then to go back in time with, with having a prequel afterwards was, was really fun. It was kind of hard too because I needed to go younger with my voice and go to 14 years old instead of 22 that she was. I think we made her, I think we made her closer to 24 for the prequel. No, for the sequel. And then I had to go back in time, like about 10 years to go 14. So that was, that was challenging and fun, very fun. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Jody. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say, first of all, it was a really um, tremendous pleasure for me personally being able to meet you earlier at your booth. Thank you. Um, you mentioned that the movie's you know, turned over 30 years old. It's literally as old as I am. Yeah. I was born in 88, so... <laughs> That's um, perfect. I grew up watching it. It was the movie I always remember being my first Disney movie. Um, so that was, it, it was really inspiring to me. Oh, um, thank my you. My question is, though, um, you talked about how you had to time jump back and forth age-wise mm -hmm. between the two movies. What was your, uh, like, drawing point for inspiration for playing the original Ariel, considering the fact that she says she's 16 in the movie and... 
obviously you were a little bit probably older than that. Yes. Um, you know, what was your inspiration? Well, together? it's great because I had my animator, Glenn Keane. I had uh, Ron and John, our directors. I had Howard and Alan, our composer and our lyricist. And then Howard was really kind of my personal director. So I had so many people around me for support with pencil sketches and interpreting the, the script to me that, that I had that ability to be able to figure out what she was going to be like and who was she going to be like and what she was going to sound like. So we kind of bounced ideas off as a group. And once we found her voice, then Glenn Keane says, you know, then she came to life. Because, you know, Glenn had been sketching her for all of this time and was waiting for her to be born, so to speak. So he'll tell you that Ariel really came to life when she was given her voice. And so when those worlds blend together, it was, it was just perfect. So, but it's a group effort. It's totally, as an actress, you rely on the brilliance of the team around you to interpret the story and to give meaning to each of these lines. Um, and so I had that. I had that support team around me. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. H howdy, Miss Benson. Hi, how are you? Um, my name's Austin. I just got like a simple question. What sure. was the funniest thing that happened while y'all were making The Little Mermaid? <laughs> the funniest thing, well, one of the things that I did is I hit the microphone all the time. So that would get to be very annoying. And I'd get very frustrated with myself because I would use my hands a lot and I'd start, start hitting it. And the other thing that I would do is um, when, when you're singing and when you're talking and maybe yelling and making all sorts of noises, um, I would hold, take too much oxygen in and not let enough out. So what would happen is after every line or every song section, I would burp. And so um, they, they would make a a play track of all my burps, so, <laughs> yeah. So that would get played back to me, you know, later on, a few weeks later, like, let's hear this pass, Jody, and it would just be me burping. I'd be like, oh my gosh. You know, because they, they keep the microphone hot and alive <laughs> the whole time here in the booth. And um, so when I'm having private conversations with somebody about the character or whatever, you know, I kind of forget that, that it's being recorded, so. That will come back to haunt me <laughs> sometimes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Good. Um, firstly, I just wanted to say, uh, as a little girl, I used to watch Little Mermaid all the time on VHS. And um, that kind of watching those movies that I love over and over start, started my love of cinema and film. And I just graduated with my bachelor's in film studies and I'm about to wrap my first feature length documentary. Congratulations. Thank, thank you. But That's that, amazing. That being said, what's an aspect of Ariel's character that you really admire and that you hope inspires others when they watch the film? Mm. Um, when I get this question, I always give the same answer because it's the one that always comes to my mind the, the most. It's, it's her tenacious spirit. It's her tenacity. And it's that I have that quality in me where you... If a door is slammed in my face, I will keep pushing it open until, until I know it's like cemented shut. Like I can never just let something go the first time. So if, if it's a no the first time, that usually just means maybe it's a possibility. <laughs> so I don't really do the whole no thing. I'll just be like, oh, let's just try it a different way. Um, but I think that's the quality that I admire most about her is that she... She just never gives up, and uh, in some ways that can come off to be very stubborn-minded, but I find it to be a, a tenacious spirit where even with everything coming against her, she just keeps on going, and I love that. I love that quality, and I, I like to uh, encourage people to give that a try because then we, that way you really have no regrets you really don't look back on your life going, oh, shoulda, coulda, woulda. Like, I don't really feel like I have any shoulda, coulda, wouldas, or I look back going, oh, man, I just really wish I, wish I would have dot, 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 you know? Um, so for me personally, I, I don't feel that in my life, and I, I think it's the tenacity that I feel like I was 
kind of blessed with, and it's one of the qualities that I've tried to, you know, pass on with, with Ariel. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, and thank congratulations you. on your film. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Thank you. Hello. Hey, how are wow. you? My name's Ariel. Oh. Just kidding, it's Alex. Oh, okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but that was good, though. I like that. Thank you. I, um. I totally believed you. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I was little, and I feel this might be completely wrong, so I'm sorry, audience. When I was little, I had the VHS of Pocahontas, and I swear you were on the beginning of it, like, as you, and you said something, and then the movie, there was a few other, like, previews, and then the movie started. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 I remember that. I remember you, and then Flounder was, something was in a bowl. So my question is... Yeah. is that the Phil and Gill thing? Yeah. Talking yes, to the fish? yes. Was that in front of Pocahontas? I thought it was in front of our movie as well. It's on both of them? Okay, yeah, you're right. I, I definitely remember Pocahontas, because my, my yeah, brain was right. like, I what, forgot. Ariel and Pocahontas? What? I forgot that was on the Pocahontas list. That's cool. So, my question is, if all the princesses or Disney characters existed at one time, a la the new movie with the, the online thing, um, Wreck-It Ralph, who would be Ariel's best friend? Oh, well, Ariel's best friend is Belle. Oh. Yeah. That was fast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Paige, and I, Paige and I have been friends for 35, 6, 7, 37 years. So, we've always said, oh, of course, Ariel and Paige are best friends. Of course they are. Because we're precious friends in real life. So we just created that. Oh, cool. Thank you very <laughs> we much. We just say that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Thank you. Here you go. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Um, how did you feel when you got the part? Well, I was really shocked, really surprised, and I completely forgot that I had auditioned for the movie. So... <laughs> A year had gone by, and I had a pager. You don't know what those are, but I had a pager. <laughs> and I had a roll of quarters, and I went to the payphone in New York on 14th Street and Broadway, and because it said, call your agent. So I called my agent, and she said, um, you got the part. And I was like, well, what part is that? And she said, you got Ariel. I'm like, what is that? I mean, I totally forgot. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, you're going to be doing this animated feature film called The Little Mermaid. I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 I remember that. That was a year ago. Because uh, life had gone on. I'd been doing a Broadway show, and, you know, the stage was my focus point. Um, and so I was uh, probably not as excited as most people would think I would have been. I actually was just sort of like, oh, oh, yeah, that thing I did. Oh, okay, cool. Um, because it was just going to... I was just going to disappear and record in L.A., you know, for two weeks and then come back and do a Broadway show and no one would ever know and they would just roll the credits at the end and no one would ever put together two and two that that's me. So it wasn't until um, the movie was screened and the critics went crazy and it brought back animation to the lot at Disney, which was closing. I mean, imagine that, right? No more Disney animation at the time. And um, they said, we're sending you to 22 cities in 20 days. And I'm like, why? And they're like, because this is big. This is a big deal. Um, and we did a photo shoot thing for People Magazine. And all of a sudden, it was like, oh, gosh, everybody knows who we are now as voices. Mm -hmm. So it was a huge surprise, which is just so funny from getting the job and just kind of going, oh, all right, that's cool. That'd be fun. You know, how many days am I working? What am I doing? Because I was flying back and forth, and I'd tell people, and they're like, what? And you're in an animated movie? And I um, told my family, and, <laughs> you know, my mom, she's so cute. She's like, well, so you got a movie? I'm like, yeah, I got a movie. And she goes, well, are you in the movie? I'm like, yeah, I'm in the movie. I'm the lead. I'm, like, I'm the title character. I'm the Little Mermaid. So we're going to see you in the movie? I'm like, no, no, it's just, it's an animated. It's a cartoon? We're just, <laughs> we just hear you? And anyways, it wasn't a big deal back then. So, and um, doing animation back then was not a very good job. Everybody was kind of like, your career is tanking at the time. So um, I just stopped talking about it and didn't tell anybody I was doing it. And then the movie came out and everybody's like, why did you tell us you were in this movie? I was like, because you all made fun of me at the time that I got the job. <laughs> so... Yeah, so it's kind of full circle. It's really funny because it wasn't a big deal when it started and then it turned into this huge thing and 
Now here we are still talking about it 30 years later. So it's Thank pretty cool. You. Thank you, sweetie. Hey there, buddy. Were you ever tired of talking? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I, and you probably get tired of listening to me talk after a while, right? I get tired of my own voice sometimes, especially after a weekend like this when I'm talking to thousands and thousands of people. I'm sure they get annoyed hearing my voice. After, guys, they get annoyed hearing my voice myself. But yeah, it comes with the job. It comes with the territory. So if you can grin and bear it, then I can grin and bear it too. Anything else? That no, that's it. Turning around and going. Bye-bye. <laughs> you ever get sick of hearing your own voice? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> uh, so cute. Hey. Hi, Jody. Hi. hi. This is my friend Evan. Everybody say hi to Evan. <laughs> I'm Natalie, his mom. And that's um, Natalie, his mom. I, she's I'm just not as, as important. Im no, yes, she's no, no. just as important. <laughs> um, well, we just wanted a chance to just say goodbye and say Aww. thank you so much for your kindness. Um, as Evan read his letter to you a couple days ago, yeah. and um, you've been so meaningful to him. And um, so thank you for that. Oh, thank um, you. We're glad to be your friend. And um, we just know that in watching past Q and A's, you know, you've had um, you've been pretty open about some challenges that you've had in in your life, and uh, and also about your faith. And so we just wanted a chance to kind of ask you, what advice would you have for someone who's trying to kind of move forward from a tough time in their life? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Evan um, read me a letter the other day at my table um, that really took me completely by surprise. Uh, and it basically just shared his personal journey with what the Little Mermaid and what Ariel meant to him and how me as a person had touched his life as well. It was really, really precious and lovely. So thank you guys so much for being so um, transparent and sharing your story with me because Evan really touched my heart and it made a difference. So it's neat to know that even though it's an animated feature film and it's a, it's a piece of entertainment, that it has value to people, you know? Um, our film has touched a lot of people through the years, over the 30 years, and including me in my life. Um, right after The Little Mermaid came out, uh, I had a very difficult, dark season of my life um, where I had separated from my husband and was um, <clears throat> battling depression and uh, suicide issues of which uh, were very, very painful at the time, especially coming right after such a joyous experience of The Little Mermaid in 1990 was a very dark year for me. And um, that's when I really clung to my faith, you know, when I made that decision that life is worth living and that God has a plan for me and I got to get through this really tough time. And uh, depression and battling suicide thoughts and issues is, is no laughing matter. It's really very painful, very difficult. And I know that Evan and his mom have been through that journey as well. So I, as a believer, I had to cling to my faith and to know that God had something great in store. And um, my husband was amazing walking through that journey with me. And we reunited after 18 months of being apart. And I got on the road to being healthy and very grateful. <laughs> so thankful that I am here. <laughs> And it's amazing that, you know, when I think about that, that, uh, that I have two amazing kids. And um, when I look at them, I just think, wow, you know, making those decisions and choices back then, I wouldn't have these two amazing kids, you know. So God definitely did have an incredible plan. So for those of you that have struggled, like Evan and myself, um, there's hope. There's hope. There really is. And so grateful, so grateful to uh, have come through on the other side. And so thankful that uh, God 
plucked me out <laughs> of the dark. And, uh, oh, she's giving me a, a high sign. She's not saying hi, she's saying five. Um, but anyways, so thank you guys. Thanks for, for letting me be a part of your journey. Yeah. So, uh, the time is short, so I'll be brief. Um, I'm, uh, thank you so much for being willing to let me make that connection with you. And thank you for being my friend. Yes, Evan, thank you. I'm so glad we're friends. Yeah, that's a blessing. It's been a blessing getting to meet you guys this weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, Jody. Hey. Can I ask two questions? Uh, sure. Okay. First, how did you and Paige become good friends? <laughs> and secondly, can you name all six of Ariel's sisters? No, I can't name all the sisters. I'm so bad. Okay, um, but you guys can help me. Aquata, Andrina, Arista, Alana, what? Adela? And then who are we missing? Atina. Is that everybody? Okay, good. It's a group effort. And what was the other question? How did you and Paige become friends? Oh, how do we become friends? Uh, yes, Paige did the national tour of Oklahoma, uh, the Broadway show, the national tour with my husband. And she was Ado Annie and he was Will Parker. And that's before we got married. So that would be 80, 81. So that's how long I've known Paige. So that's, that's a lot of years, right? 39? Is that 39 years we've been friends? Golly, that's crazy. Ursula! Hey. <laughs> so I'm going to deviate a little bit from uh, the Little Mermaid talk. Sure. But um, one of my favorite movies ever was Enchanted. Oh, great. Um, and you had a little snippet yes, in Enchanted. <laughs> um, and I'm just curious, how did that like slightly <laughs> ironic role come to be? I know, I know. <laughs> Kevin Lima, the director, just thought it would be so cool to make these surprise little cameo appearances from Disney princesses. So it was really just a joke. I was supposed to just do the little scene with the tank when she has the fish in her mouth and they play Part of Your World. I mean, it's just all just so funny. But um, I kind of made a connection with, with Patrick and I didn't know who he was. And so I guess that was refreshing for him. Anyways, we just kind of had a little banter going. So then they kind of added a couple more scenes. It wasn't supposed to be that. It just kind of turned into a little bit more. But I had so much fun. I'd never done anything like that, of course. And, and so when the camera is on and the red light, of course, I'm not knowing anything. And I kept putting, using my hands because I'm Italian, so I'm using my hands. And he'd be like, um, you're, you're blocking the camera. And I'm like, where's the camera? I, I'm not even aware of it, you know? So I said, just teach me what I'm supposed to do because I'm a newbie at this. I have no idea. So he was so gracious. Yeah, but it was really fun. Fun doing something different like that, you know? Hey, you're back. Other than yourself, what was your favorite character? Oh, other, other than Ariel? Okay, gotcha. Um, well, it's not an animated film, but I really like the character of Polly Baker from a Broadway musical I did called Crazy For You. And I really, really enjoyed doing that character. A really fun, really fun part. I meant from The Little Mermaid. Oh, from The Little Mermaid, sorry. Uh, I love Flounder. Flounder's our best friend, so we love Flounder. Yes. Did I finish all my questions? Okay, good. So you guys have been so sweet and kind. So before I do something else, I have to do what I always do for my family, which is I take selfies. So everybody kind of squeeze in and hold on one second. Okay, hold on. If you guys want to come up, we're going to do the uh, Galaxy Con selfie. Oh, can I get this too? Absolutely. Here, you take it from here. Take it for me. All right, here we go. Here we go. On three. One, two, and three. Just going to check.
check that really quick. Okay, so I'm going to sing, because that's how I always end my panels. Yeah, so fun, so fun. We haven't done a sound check yet, so could I just hear the track? Can I hear the track? Pretty Please with Sugar on Top. Hold on one second. Ooh, that sounds really, that's a little hot. You can turn that down. Look at this stuff. Okay, can we go down just a smidge because it's really feeding back? How does that sound out there? Does that sound good out there? Yeah? Okay, cool. Let's start it over. We're so low key. You are all holding up your cameras, and I'm gonna like all get in trouble as you YouTube it. Just don't like hide it because then Disney's gonna be like, what are you doing? You're singing the song. What are you doing with the camera in between the. What are you doing? He's like, <laughs> he's like sneaky. <laughs> okay, here we go. Is that what he's doing? He's like so sneaky though. He's taking a picture of all of you, taking video of me. Here we go. Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? Wouldn't you think I'm the girl? girl who has everything. Look at this trove, treasures untold. How many wonders can one cavern hold? Looking around here you think, sure, she's got everything. I've got gadgets and gizmos aplenty. I've got who's it's and what's it's galore. You want thingamabobs? I got 20. <laughs> but who cares? No big deal. I want more. I want to be where the people are. I want to see, want to see them dancing, walking around on those, what do you call them? Oh, feet. <laughs> Flipping your fins, you don't get too far. Legs are required for jumping, dancing, strolling along down a what's that word again? Street. Up where they walk, up where they run, up where they stay all day in the sun, wandering free. Wish I could be part of that world. And what would I give if I could live out of these waters? What would I pay to spend a day warm on the sand? Betcha on land, they understand, but they don't reprimand their daughters. Bright young women, sick of swimming, ready to stand. And ready to know what the people know. Ask my questions and get some answers. What's a fire and why does it, what's the word, burn? When's it my turn? Wouldn't I love, love to explore the shore above? Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me today. God bless. Bye-bye.